in my leadership conferences, uh, during breaks, people will come up to me and they'll say something like this. They'll say, John, um, I love your leadership principles, but I just want you to understand that, um, that it doesn't work for me because I'm not the top leader and, and I have somebody that's in a leadership position above me. And I continually heard people say, well, um, I, I just can't apply those principles because I'm not the top leader. Or they would say to me, wow, those principles were powerful. I wish my leader was here. He or she could really use this stuff. How many of you have ever had to follow, I mean, not now, obviously, not now, but in another lifetime? How many of you have ever had to follow a bad leader? Let me see your hands. <laughs> not only do I have hands, I hear groans in the audience. It's, oh, yeah, I remember that very, very well. Well, I wrote the 360-degree leader so that you would understand that you can lead from anywhere in the organization. In fact, I want you to look at your neighbor right now in the studio, and I want you to say to them, you can lead from anywhere in your organization. Go ahead and tell them that right now. Just let them know that. Now, now some of you, when you're telling them that, you look surprised. <laughs> In fact, look right back at your neighbor and say, and, and now that you're going to learn how to do that, I want you to start leading from any place in the organization. <laughs> I mean, let's get going. Okay, now that we have begun to understand how to do that, let's start leading from that part of the organization. Okay. In my 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, the law of influence. And the law of influence says the true measure of leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. That leadership law sums up the 360-degree leader. Leadership is influence. In fact, I almost called this book Leading from the Middle of the Pack with the subtitle, Follow Me, I'm Right Behind You. Because I wanted people to understand, you can lead from the middle of the pack, you can lead from the bottom of the organization. You can lead from the top of the organization. You can influence people wherever you are. And I'm committed in this teaching, and I'm committed in the book, The 360-Degree Leader, to help a person, no matter where they are in a department or an organization, to begin to be able to influence others and lead effectively from there. Now, when people do not lead from different parts of an organization, it's because they bought into one of several myths. Myths that many people have bought into about leading from the middle of the pack, and I want to give you a few of them today. For example, number one is the position myth. The position myth just simply says, I can't lead if I'm not at the top. I have run into many people like that. They say, well, I love your leadership stuff, John, but I'm not the main leader, and so therefore I can't lead. In my book, Developing the Leader Within You, I talk about the five levels of leadership. And in the five levels of leadership, I'm going to take just a moment to review that. I speak about the fact that if you'll go to the lowest level in the left-hand part of your page, the bottom level, where the word rights is on the inside of that first step, on the outside of that first step, put the word position. Because the lowest level of leadership or the lowest level of influence is the position level. Now, sadly, most people think it's the highest level. They think it's the most important level. And so, therefore, when people get a leadership position, they think they have become a leader. It's the lowest level. The second level is the permission level. That's where you begin to develop relationships with people. You not only have a position, but you have a relationship. It's a much higher level of leading than just the lowest level of position. The third level is the production level. That's where results happen. That's where people begin to follow you because of what you have done for the organization. Level number four, which is the level I am always striving as a leadership mentor and teacher to get people to arrive at, is the what I call people development level. That's where they begin to reproduce. They begin to train other people. They begin to train other leaders. They begin to reproduce themselves. They begin to have a legacy within their organization. And I'm always going, trying to help people get to level number four. Now, the last level, the personhood level, which is where the respect really comes in, is a level that you don't earn. It's a level that you don't go and get yourself, it was given to you by the people that you have followed you effectively for so long. Now, what, here's what I want you just to see about these five levels. The lowest level of leadership or influence in an organization is the position level. Now, we're not being critical about the position level because that's how you start. All of us start with a position. Nothing wrong with that. 
What is sad is when we think that that is leadership, or what is sad is when we think that if we just stay on that position level and not grow as a leader, that will be enough to help us do the leadership that we want to accomplish. That's an impossibility. And the 360 degree leader basically says about this position myth that there's no such thing as having a position where it will give you not only the rights, but it will give you the influence to lead all by itself. In fact, David Branker said this following quote that I love. To do nothing in the middle is to create more weight for the top leader to move. For some leaders, it might even feel like dead weight. Leaders in the middle can have a profound effect on an organization. In your notes, leadership is a choice you make, not a place you sit. That's a tremendous statement. It's a choice you make. I choose to be a leader. It's not the place that I sit. Now, I could always tell a person that's bought into the position myth because here's what they'll tell me. They'll come up to me and they'll be all excited. And they'll say, now, John, I know you teach leadership and et cetera. And I just want you to know, last week, and they'll be so excited, they'll say, last week, I became a leader. And I know immediately what they're thinking. They're like, you, they got a leadership position last week. And they think when they got the position, they became the leader. I just want you to know one more time that the position doesn't make you a leader. I've already asked the question in the studio. How many of you followed a person that was your leader that wasn't a good leader? That's a classic example of a person being put in a leadership position that couldn't lead. In fact, if you really want to know what's wrong with our country, you want to know what's wrong with most organizations, I can tell you what's wrong. we got people in leadership positions that can't lead. And that's why I wrote the 360-degree leader, the position myth, number one. Number two, the destination myth. The destination myth basically says, when I get to the top, then I'll learn to lead. We've all made that mistake. We've all thought, you know what, if I ever get that leadership position, I'm going to really have to learn how to lead. In fact, many times I have people come to me and they know that I write leadership books. And they'll say, wow, I understand you write leadership books. Well, yeah, I write some. And, and then they'll say, well, you know what, if I ever become a leader, I'm going to read one of those books. <laughs> and I always want to say, here's a thought. Why don't you read one of my books? And then you can become a leader. They've got it all turned around. You see, in the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, one of the laws is the law of process, which says leadership develops daily, not in a day. And anybody that thinks leadership is a place or a time or a position or an office is never going to be prepared if they're ever given any of those things because they're thinking when they get there, that's when either they should prepare or when they get there, the position will allow them to carry and pull off the leadership. My good friend John Wooden says it this way, when opportunity comes, it's too late to prepare. In other words, be preparing yourself now. One of the most exciting parts to me of the 360 degree leader is this book is going to be put in the hands of many people in middle leadership, in the middle of an organization, and they're going to all of a sudden discover that this destination myth is nothing more than a myth, and that they, if they learn to lead right now, it will help them lead where they are, and it will prepare them as they go to other positions within the organization. They will already know how to lead. The third myth is the influence myth. The influence myth basically says, if I were on top, then people would follow me. Have you ever met somebody who basically said, you know, um, the reason I don't influence anybody is because I don't have a leadership position. But boy, if I could just, if I could just have that position, then everybody would follow me. And again, they have this myth that somehow the position gets very mythical and you get it and then all of a sudden everybody kind of is influenced by you. In fact, in your notes, here's a statement I think is so true. People who have no leadership experience have a tendency to overestimate the importance of a leadership title. People ha that have no leadership position, so many times they just overestimate a person that has a leadership position or title. In the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, the law that fits this myth is the law of buy-in. People buy into the leader, and I had this underlined, this next word, then the vision. Notice this, they buy into the leader and then they buy into the vision. There's a tremendous misunderstanding about the fact that, that 
if we have the position, it'll give us more influence. In fact, in your notes, a position doesn't make a leader, but a leader can make the position. You may be able to grant someone a position, but you cannot grant them real leadership. Influence must be earned. Myth number four, the inexperience myth. A person that lacks experience basically says sometimes, when I get to the top, I'll be in control. <laughs> well, let me ask you, let me do a little poll here again in the studio. Um, how many of you have said something like this? You know, you're part of a department, you're part of an organization, you probably don't like the way things are going. And how many of you ever said this? Well, I'll tell you right now, if I were in charge, things would be different around here. How many of you ever said that once? Uh, okay, okay, yeah. Well, I can tell you right now, if I could make that decision, and we just have this tremendous kind of sense that if we were a leader, we would be in control. Now, now, let me just give you the good news and the bad news. The good news is the desire to change an organization is a mark of a leader. So when I hear somebody say, well, if I could just get in there and lead it, a lot of times that's the restlessness of a potential leader, no doubt about it. So the desire to change something is kind of the mark of a leader. The bad news is that if we ever get that position, we're going to find out we overestimated how much we could control as a leader. See, there's this idea that leaders are always in control. Uh, let me give you a classic example. It's one that would be known to our nation here in America, and that is President Bush. His first term of office, more than anything else, was determined by 9-11. When those two buildings in New York City fell and the terrorists hit, that defined his first term of office more than anything else that he said or did, something that was totally out of his control. You see, a leader doesn't control a lot. Now, a leader has the ability, once things happen, to make some decisions that can make the situation better or worse. But this thing of leaders being in control and always getting their way and calling every shot and everything else around them basically you just determine about how they're controlling things is just overestimated. Now, that was in the first term of President Bush's office, and he's right now still in office, but I would say this, probably Katrina, more than anything else, is going to define his second term of office. Isn't it interesting? President of the United States, quote, the most powerful person in the world, and two things that were totally out of his control are going to reflect and determine his leadership more than anything else. And so when we look and say, if I were there and if I could get control and if I could do this, most of the time we're just overestimating again the power of the leader. Number five, the fifth myth is the freedom myth. The freedom myth basically says, when I get to the top, I'll no longer be limited. You know, I free at last. I'm at the top now. Woo! I'm not going to be limited by anybody. I'm not going to be limited by anything. In your notes, in many organizations, as you move up the ladder, you may find that the amount of responsibility you take on increases faster than the amount of authority you receive. Wow, isn't that true? In fact, what I have discovered is this. Our rights, as we expand in our leadership, never equal our responsibilities. Our responsibilities are always greater than our rights. In fact, that's why I, I took a moment in, in, in the 360-degree uh, leader book and in, in this lecture here, I have the two pyramids, one's upside down, on the left side is rights, and as a, as a leader goes up that pyramid, those rights actually decrease. But the inverted pyramid with the responsibilities, as we go up that pyramid, the responsibilities increase. And anyone that has spoken much in leadership or understood leadership much or had leadership positions for a long time understands the responsibilities just continue to increase. My father, who is a wonderful leader, quoted to me many times the, the, the statement, to whomsoever much is given, much shall be required. John, just understand that when you lead a lot of people, there are a tremendous amount of responsibilities. Myth number six is the potential myth. 
One of the reasons I wrote this book is for this myth right here, because people many times say, I can't reach my potential if I'm not the top leader. Here's the reality. A couple things here quickly. Number one, most people will never be the top leader in an organization. Is that not true? So if we think that the only way we can reach our potential is to be the top leader, there are very, very few people who will ever reach their potential. Let's go on. I believe that people should strive for the top of their game, not the top of the organization. In other words, be the best where you are. Only when leaders in the middle reach their potential will the leader at the top reach his or her potential. In other words, only as you and I get better in the middle of the pack can we make the person at the top of the pack be better. But let me just say this. Not only when we do our best in the middle of the pack as a 360-degree leader make the top leaders better, let me also say this. We make ourselves better. All we're doing is doing things well that allows us to keep growing as a leader and probably going up closer to the top of the organization ourselves. I have a wonderful inner circle. It's a very small one anymore. I've sold one of my organizations, and, and so my inner circle kind of is a little bit reduced. But in my small inner circle that I have, here's what I know. Those five or six people that I greatly depend upon, the better they are, the better I am. Uh, they're either the wind beneath my wings or they're the anchor on my boat. You know what I'm talking about, huh? It, it goes back to the law of the inner circle, doesn't it? In the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership, what's the law of the inner circle say? Very simply, a leader's potential is determined by those around him or her. One more myth, one more myth that I want to talk about to dispel as we look into the 360-degree leader, and that is number seven, the all-or-nothing myth. Some people say, if I can't get to the top, then I just won't try to lead. As if success is getting on the top. In the paragraph in your notes, I believe that individuals can become better leaders wherever they are. Improve your leadership and you impact your organization. You can change people's lives. You can be someone who adds value. You can turn, the, turn to influence people at every level of the organization, if, even if you never get to the top. And I love this phrase here, I underline it in my notes, by helping others, you can help yourself. And so let's take a brief review of the seven myths of every leader in the middle that faces. In fact, what I would, what I would do is I go through the seven myths. Do me a favor in your own notes. Uh, circle one, the one that you have maybe bought into that's kind of messing you up the very most. Okay, just circle one of them. Uh, the one, maybe you've bought into the position myth. I, I can't lead if I'm not on the top. Or number two, the destination myth. When I get to the top, then I'll learn to lead. Or number three, the influence myth. If I were on top, then people would follow me. The inexperience myth. When I get to the top, I'll be in control. The freedom myth. When I get to the top, I'll no longer be limited. Or myth number six. This is all about potential. I can't reach my potential if I'm not a top leader. Or myth number seven, the all or nothing myth. If I can't get to the top, then I won't try to lead. My word of advice to you is very simple. Whatever myths you have bought into will keep you from being a 360-degree leader. So get rid of them. They are all myths.